Hello and uh, welcome to this video. Um, today I wanted to show you the progress that I have been working on, working on the major update for the RTS engine. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video around 10 minutes, so I'll be showing you some of the stuff that uh, I have completed working on, some of the stuff that is still work in progress, and uh, yeah, just the main things to let you know that this project is still going and it is going strong. All right, so let's start. Uh, this is uh, one of the, uh, it's a, dem a demo scene for the RTS engine and it looks like uh, the old demo scene. I specifically wanted to keep the workflow as similar as possible to how it used to be. So not a lot of like big changes, at least to what you're going to be dealing with in terms of the, uh, the workflow and the Unity editor. Just like the whole code has been rewritten pretty much uh, to be more efficient and more customizable and more modular. But what you're going to see is very similar to before. So we have our map scene right here, we have our game manager object, and then we have uh, the essential uh, dependencies. They used to be called services, now they're just going to be called dependencies, and these are different uh, dependencies of different systems in the RTS engine. Back to the game manager object here, <clears throat> we see we have a default game builder tab. And in this tab, we can define the factions that we'll be playing in this map. For for example, we have two factions right here, element 0 and 1. And one of them is the NPC, the other is the host. We can also pick the initial time scale through the editor directly here from the game manager. And for example, uh, as you can see, one of the changes that I want to work on is also like more feedback when it comes to the editor fields. And so, for example, here it's telling you that, like, hey, for faction types, uh, it's not an assi it's not assigned, so it shows you a, a red background to tell you that, hey, this is not assigned. But there is one that it's shown you here, and it's uh, showing you uh, this uh, as a suggestion. So it's finding one in the project, and for example, you can click on it, and now it's assigned and it's green. But for example, here for the NPC types, there is actually no NPC type in the project at all, which is not a problem. You can have a faction without an NPC type, but for example, let's say you want to create one, you can create one directly from clicking on this button right here. And then, boom, it's created, and then you could click on it, and then you can find it here, and then, you know, you can assign the settings for it uh, directly through here. And yeah, you can also, instead of creating one, maybe you have something that you want to clone. And so, like, for this faction type, you can click on this button, and now you clone it, and now you have uh, two of them, and, you know, they have a unique code, but it takes all of the other attributes. From the older one um so yeah basically uh very similar to before maybe the main change here is that uh, we used to have different uh, settings for the map size and the terrain manager and on the grid search manager and right now there is only one uh, map size settings and that you can find in the game manager directly so you can set it right here and then you can have the gizmo color change and you can see that reflected uh, directly into the map scene so we have different game dependencies. Uh, some of them are new, some of them are old. Uh, also, one of the main changes is like the removal of the concept of like having units or like resources or buildings as dedicated uh, types. And now we only have entities and entities can be units, buildings can be resources and they can be all of that at the same time. So this is more of a, an update to make things more modular. And you simply, like, you have an entity and then you add, like, an entity movement component to it and then it becomes a unit because now it starts moving. And for a building, you just add, like, a building placer and some other components to it and it becomes a building. And so, yeah, those, like, type-specific concepts have been removed and we're only dealing with entities. That's why there's only one entity manager that creates all of those. And here, for example, we assign what prefabs we're going to use. We can also use ones from resources path or simply just assign them directly. And, you know, we can choose the type right here. In terms of factions, um, this is the faction manager. And unlike, uh, sorry, this is lagging a little bit. And unlike the game manager right here, in the faction manager, we have uh, like the possible slots that can be used. And so we need to have like more slots and the builder. Uh, more slots in this faction manager than what the builder has either in this menu here or directly in the scene here or in the lobby menu and here we define what 
uh, entities that uh, each faction slot can start with. And here you can see different options. You can assign like prefabs uh, directly. You can assign like a, a parent object that contains prefabs as children. And then all of the children will be added to the faction once it starts. You can also have pre-placed parents. You can have like direct uh, like uh, entities uh, in the scene and whatever, or just like a combination of all of them. And this is just to make it simpler for you to create the factions. And we can also have like different filters here for faction types and NPC types. And yeah, so you can decide what kind of uh, initial faction entities you can have dependent on faction types and entity types. Uh, logs, just like as regular, the NPC hasn't really been worked on that much. So we'll just like leave it there. Uh, we also have a time scale manager and an update manager and we're going to come back to this a little bit later there's just simply um all of the updates and like time related uh repetitive calls will be uh like uh collected in this update manager and we can have we can take a look at what's going on all the time through uh the debugging later in this update manager so we're just going to come back to it uh regular movement stuff uh, very similar to before, but also a little bit different and much more cleaner in terms of how uh, code is written. The uh, attributes manager, I announced that in the Discord server a while ago that I was working on this, but basically we now have the concepts of attributes and everything that you can see in like, um, in, in entity components can be assigned as attributes. We have our terrain manager, which has been separated into a terrain height cache manager and terrain manager. We have our grid search which is, you know, uh, the thing that we're used to from before, and we have our cameras. And then here we can have, like, the modules, and right here there is only, like, no modules at the moment, but yeah, this is where they're going to be placed for the things that are not necessary. And, you know, this is just, like, a temporary debug setting that I have, but maybe I can go ahead and show you the uh, entities. So let's open one of the entity prefabs. So this is one of the, you know, being worked on entities, and right here you see that the entity has a, it has in its main component an entity component, and then you can add like the data for that entity. So now the entities are defined by like a data scriptable object, which you can see here. As soon as I click on it, I can go to it right directly. And then, you know, I can see like some uh, very useful fields about this entity. And we can also like, if it's unassigned, we can't really like change anything, but like we can assign it. And then we can change the fields that we just saw on the scriptable object directly for here. So, you know, makes it a little bit easier. Um, we have an attributes manager that is dedicated for the entity, uh, the animation controller. We also, the concept of like having the same states or the same uh, controllers or override controllers for entities will be removed. And so you can have different animation controls that can be as complex or as simple as possible. And then through your uh, components, you just like, say okay i want to use this override controller and i want to use this parameter i want to enable it or disable it and that's how you control uh, the animator through other entity components and as we can see here for example this is uh, an initial animator arguments which we will see in the movement too in a bit and here we say hey i want to use this override controller and i want to use this parameter and set it to be enabled um yeah this a queue handler for the entities and this is the faction entity component is now separate from the entity component. You, they used, this used to be an extension of the entity component, but now it's just like a separate thing. And an entity can only be belonging to a faction if it actually has this component. And now also the movement component, which is also controlled through a data object. So like you can create a data object where you can assign the different uh, settings for the movement for this entity. So like for this idle state and its move state. And uh, you can simply drag and drop this data object directly through this entity component, or you can find it here. And the idea here is that if you want to use the same settings for different entities, you don't need to like redefine them uh, uh, every time. And also like the same entity types will just only have one reference point in terms of like whatever static uh, fields that you choose for that component and we have some agile animation arguments like we saw in the animator controller right now we have other options that you might be familiar with from the uh, current rts engine version and then we have this is one example of the attributes so 
the idle rotation speed is now something that you can create a dedicated attribute for. And then you can simply find it here or like look for it. And then it tells you some basic information about this attribute, but also where we can see here some other attributes for the movement speed. For example, I have not assigned any data object for this attribute. I would just set the value directly. So if you don't want to assign a, an attribute data object, you can in just simply not do that and just assign the value that the attribute will start with. With then when the entity is created, it's going to create an attribute for it. But the advantage of using a data object attribute is that you can, for example, apply like multi multiplication or addition uh, modifiers to it and so you can change it and if you have the same attribute attached to different units then it's going to affect them all and this is now the way that I want to be handling like attributes and like updates for the entity components instead of having to like update the whole component and do all of that inefficient work uh, with the current version of the RTS engine we just like update the attributes and it's the same thing for the acceleration the rotation and everything else and the formation is also a data object like we're used to. And maybe now we can start the scene and we'll discard the changes. I will just go ahead and start the scene. <clears throat> All right, so when we open this demo map scene, we can now uh, see that using this dedicated movement test component that I wanted to debug the movement with, if I click on the left mouse, that these entities will just start moving through different waypoints. And this is just for me to test uh, the um, entity queue uh, targets, so like given like commands and put them in the queue. And so, for example, we can do this again and then see one of the example units, and then you can see like all of these uh, tasks are added to the queue, and then they're uh, removed incrementally as soon as each task is uh, executed in the entity movement. But we can also take a look at the movement debug here, and so we're going to start that again. Just pause the game and then go to the debug tab and we can see like, okay, now we're currently in this state, we're moving state. And we can see like there is gizmos for the target obstacles that the entities are going to move towards right here. And then we can see the target uh, destination, whether they're moving towards an entity or not. And then a lot of uh, other settings in the current speed and acceleration and rotation uh, values from the attributes. And we're just going to let them here move. And clicking on the right hand side moves them to the direction of where the mouse is. So right now we're back to idle. They're not moving anymore and all of the settings are right here. We can also take a look at the debug for the faction entities. Now another thing that I wanted to focus on is just having a lot of like useful debugs so you can see whether um, when something goes wrong, what, is it like settings? Is it like an actual bug with, a, with a, one of the components? And so a lot of information at the debug has also helped me like uh, fix a lot of things much faster and so here we can see the faction debugs we saw this earlier from the entity targets uh, the commands queue and the animation it also tells us okay what are we using currently as the controller and then we have the entity attribute handler and before we assign this attribute that created the data object for in the project and we can see it here but also we have these attributes that have been created. We haven't assigned data separable objects to these, but the attributes have been created uh, for them because uh, the components re like take them as attributes. And for the value that we set to be the default speed or acceleration or rotation speed, it's created an attribute for it. And we can see here. And then later, if we have any modifiers, like you know, additional multiplication modifiers, that will be reflected here. <clears throat> And maybe it also makes a, some sense to take a look at the debug tabs of some of the game dependencies. So for example, here we have how many entity prefabs that have been recognized. We have the villager and the usher. Then we can look at debug of the of the factions. Uh, this is just like lagging a bit. Maybe we'll take a look at that later. And then here we have the simulation uh, debugs and for the update manager. We can see like there is different queues for the updates, fixed updates, and the fixed tick updates. So for example, if we move the units right here to follow the waypoints and pause and then take a look here, we can see like, oh, we have 20 uh, entity movement move state updates that are currently running. And we can just like let the units here run. And then we'll see they're all gone. And then at some point 
you know, we're back to zero on the queues here. So if something is not actively in progress, doesn't really need the update uh, callback, we don't really use it. And so that's how we probably uh, gain a lot of performance uh, and control uh, the updates loops and probably in the future this will make it easier to implement something like jobs or even ets since we have all of our update logic that can be like transported outside of the actual components themselves other thing that will be also uh, essential in the next major update is this editor window for the game dev spice assets including the rts engine on any assets in the future is we will have you have this custom editor window or we can look at the different faction types and then select them in the project, open them or clone them, and then same thing for the NPC types, the same thing for the entities. We can uh, uh, filter these entities using uh, their categories, for example, and you know by excluding all of these, we just don't have them right here. And same thing uh, for the entity attributes. Now this is a little bit uh, work in progress and probably subject to change in the future, but the main idea is to have most of the data scriptable objects that can be searched through and manipulated in the whole project and then filtered. And so you can have an overview of what entities and entity attributes that you have. Last thing I want to show is this demo from a multiplayer game. Now we have a client that has been built in the Unity editor here on the right side and just going to start as the host right here. The UI is obviously for demo purposes, so that's not going to be the final UI but you get the idea. And now we have this faction right here that is waiting in the lobby. The client now connects and it's added and then the host is uh, can start the game. And also the lobby menu here is going to be unified so that it can be used for the single player or multiplayer or any other type of uh, a game mode that requires the lobby. So it's just one code and all of these settings from the multiplayer or single player modes can be transported from the previous scenes. And we just start the game right here. We can see that the game has started for both. We can see here some of the data that has been is currently being transferred. And if we click on here, we can see that the entities are following the target positions exactly as they are. The other player can also move their own entities. They can also start going with the waypoints. And yeah, this is uh, an example of that. Everything that has been built at the moment is built with it working for multiplayer in mind. Otherwise, this is it for, these, for this first devlog, I guess, and I guess I'll see you on another update.